becoming the GM of the Los Angeles Rams, which just might be the most difficult NFL franchise to rebuild. Just two years ago, the Rams won a Super Bowl, but this current Rams team looks like they are in a lot of trouble. We have the worst overall in the league, but we're not the Texans. We are not loaded with young talent. In fact, we have almost no developing players on this team. But let's try and start with the positives. We have young Cam Akers at running back. He's your average running back right now with good acceleration. He definitely could progress. And our second round draft pick this year was Steve Avila, rookie guard. So in a couple years, he could be good. You can't talk about the Rams without talking about Cooper Cup, the triple crown winner himself. He's X-Factor. He's 97 overall, but he's also 30 years old. So he's not getting any better. Things get even worse for the Rams when you go to defense. Offense was already looking a little sparse. Aaron Donald is really the only usable guy on this defense. Now, granted, that's saying a lot. Aaron Donald is the best edge rusher in the entire game, but he's 32. Guys start retiring around 30, 31. Aaron Donald's already passed that threshold. And in real life, he almost retired this year. Obviously, he has returned for this year. I'm sure he'll continue to be a threat because he's incredible. But the Rams are so depleted that we almost have to get some capital out of either Aaron Donald or Cooper Cup. Feels horrible saying that out loud. And if things weren't bad enough, you'll realize just how much money we are paying to players that aren't improving. Aaron Donald makes sense, 99 overall. Cooper Cup makes sense, 97 overall. Matthew Stafford, 75 overall, 34 years old, has an 180 $83 million contract. I got a Stafford poster right there. And I know that this rebuild is not going to work with Stafford at QB. He's only going to get worse every year. Higby's getting paid. I don't hate that. 72 overall. Joseph Noteboom is our sixth highest player. That is not okay. Havenstein's a vet, but he's really good. So we're definitely going to hang on to him. Brian Allen's not getting any better. He's a 73 overall. I think best case scenario, we can trade Stafford and Aaron Donald in a massive bundle and get a lot of draft picks back and fully rebuild this unit. Luckily, though, the Los Angeles Rams have an ace up their sleeve, and that ace is the freshman killer. Newly 18-year-old Georgia freshman girls cower in fear of Stetson Bennett. That doesn't sound good when I say it like that, but you know what I mean. So the Rams did draft Stetson Bennett. Normal dev, 62 overall, and he may be a rookie, but he's 25. He's not a 21-year-old rookie. Stetson Bennett will likely be our quarterback for this year. The odds that he progresses well, I think, are crazy low. We have a depleted offensive line, an okay tight end, a very good wide receiver one, but then a horrible quarterback. This is just not a recipe for success. It's a recipe for tanking, which is technically illegal. If Stetson Bennett's our only quarterback, I think we're gonna tank. And that's actually a good thing for us because this is the very start of our rebuild year. There's just no way to retain all these players and have success. Now, truly, this is because they won that Super Bowl. They sold out to win that Super Bowl. And this is the aftermath. Bill Belichick said the same thing after the Patriots won all those Super Bowls. He's like, look, man, you sell out to win a Super Bowl. It's, it's going to be tough sledding after that sometimes. I have cooked up a trade. It's with the New England Patriots. They would get Aaron Donald and Matthew Stafford. I want the round one, round two, round three of this year and round one and round two of next year. I don't expect to take this, but we can work our way back. It's tough to find a team that has the cap space to take both of these guys and a team that actually would want Stafford. I think New England is a good fit for him, though. A veteran leader for Mac Jones, who's been mid, and I think every team wants Aaron Donald so but you're only getting him for about two years before he retires so is it fleece season let's try this out see how it goes Ooh, what damn it I thought I was lowballing you guys told me to lowball the CPU and then work your way back I thought this was an aggressive lowball Aaron Donald's got two years left and they just gave up two first two seconds whatever hey listen I'm so excited to get all that but damn, I got some learning to do on these rebuilds. Well, maybe we could have gotten a little bit more out of that, but still, we just acquired so much. We're kind of like the Oklahoma City Thunder of the NFL. Next thing we got to do is set our scouts for the draft. What position do we want to draft? I, honest to God, I think we're going to have to draft quarterback. I feel bad for Stetson Bennett, but there's just no way. If we draft a rookie quarterback, they're going to come out at about a 75-ish overall and star dev. So Stetson Bennett would need plus 13 overall and star dev to even match a rookie. So I think we're just tanking this season. I think Cam Akers can develop well. Von Jefferson can develop well. 
and Cooper Cup will be solid for another two years. Wouldn't be the worst idea to pick up a wide receiver, but probably not the first round, maybe a second or third round guy. We definitely need O-line. We need a tackle. We need interior O-line. We're eventually going to need a right tackle. So we definitely couldn't go wrong drafting any guard or tackle. Tight end, we should be good for a while. I like Tyler Higby. He's young enough. And on defense, keep in mind, we have a ton of cap room now. So we don't have to draft every position. We can sign free agents in a lot of positions. And I usually do like signing linebacker or D-line free agents. And then John Johnson and Jordan Fuller, are actually really solid safeties. We'll need some corner help too. It's going to depend on how the draft falls to us. But the good news is we could scout any defensive position we'd be making a good call. Byron Young, we actually did just draft this guy right here. He's a 70 overall rookie. This guy's fast as shit. Byron Young has 92 speed, 94 excel. But once again, the Rams have a fetish with 25 year olds out of college because he is 25. The reason I make such a big point of that is 21-year-olds progress so much faster than 25-year-olds, even if they're both rookies. We are officially the worst team in the league, but we are loaded up with draft picks. It's going to be a losing year for Sean McVay. We can say that much. Our three-star scout is Keith Rayner. His expertise is offensive tackles and interior offensive line. That's actually perfect, man. That's our guy. Offensive line in NFL is crazy expensive. You got to pay tackles so much. And it's very hard to find really good free agents. So it's best if we draft these guys, keep them on those rookie deals, and just let them develop. And then our two-star scout is Frankie Sanders for DNs and D-tackles. We just traded away the best DN in football. We now have all normal dev on the D-line. So I, I really like this, actually. The only thing I still need to scout is quarterbacks. And I don't have a single scout who does quarterbacks at all. There's almost a guaranteed chance we're going to have a top five pick. And looking at the prospects, Frank Morgan out of Cincinnati. Cincinnati. That's number one. Number four is Amir Anthony. Number six is Tremaine Branch. Seven is Will Porter. Eight is Humphreys. Mike Allman. This is a deep QB class. We might have to get a three-star QB scout, actually. This is too important of a position. As much as I want interior O-line, I need a QB scout. So, Keith Rayner, I'm so sorry. We're gonna have to fire you, man. You did great work, though. We appreciate you. So, Wesley Hale, expertise QB, but second expertise is tight end. That's not us. Kenny Ramsey would do safeties. No, we don't need safeties either. I hope there's one more for quarterbacks at least. If we go primary quarterbacks, we're just getting clapped on the secondary. I am gonna go with Wesley Hale. It's a bummer that that second expertise is not something we need, but I do know for a fact that we need a quarterback so bad on this team. And this is a deep quarterback class. We just have to take him. Wesley Hale will be assigned national. I just need as much info as we can on QBs. But since we're doing that, next most important to me after quarterback is actually O-line. So I'm also going to fire Frankie Sanders. And I'm going to go pick up a two-star scout. And I'll pick up a two-star scout who can do interior offensive line. And hopefully tackles as well. Sheila Thornton? Yeah, Yo, you're telling me this girl Sheila is scouting offensive linemen? I'm picking up the 300-pound heifer. Dude, I wish the scouts had a picture, man. <laughs> Dude, Sheila's got that 15% boost on O-tackle and interior O-line. Let's go. All right, our scouts are in place to find us a generational quarterback. Our team is ready to tank like all hell. And Steve Avila has an upgrade. This might be one of the only guys on this entire roster who's actually going to develop. I'm excited to give him an upgrade. It's playoff time and we successfully sucked, but we actually didn't suck that bad. 5 and 12 is shocking. Oh my god. Stetson Bennett had the 10 the most passing yards in the league. Keep in mind, I did not adjust playbooks. I assume he had to throw a lot because we were always losing, but damn, damn, he played really well. Shit, I thought I was going to draft a QB. So Stetson Bennett did go. He went from a 62 overall to a 68 overall, but his dev trade didn't upgrade, so I still can't justify keeping him. I'm sorry, Stetson. I know you guys are probably excited to see a Stetson Bennett run, but it just isn't in the cards. Not if we actually want to win a Super Bowl. Cooper Cup led the entire NFL in receiving yards. I assume that's what happens when you're literally the only good player on your team. Hey, great job. Second was Jefferson, CD, Amari Cooper, Devonta Smith, and Travis Kelsey. Demarcus Robinson was solid too. Von Jefferson. Higby didn't do all too much. Only one touchdown on the whole season. While Cooper Cup had 22. 100 yards per game. Oh my God, he probably triple crowned again, didn't he? He might have triple crowned again. Cam Akers eclipsed 1,000 rushing yards. Nice work. And Stetson Bennett went for 274. Cooper Cup won the triple crown again by a mile. 22 touchdowns, Cooper Cup. 
Averaging more than a touchdown a game. Next closest is Devonta Smith, Michael Gallup, CD Lamb. Damn, Cowboys though. Well, if you're a Rams fan, don't worry. I didn't get rid of your boy because he's still triple crowned by a fucking mile. Look at his rack yard. He must have won an award, right? Did he win a yearly award? Dude, that's a crime. He wins the triple crown and he's not even in the MVP race at all. Cooper Cup does win Offensive Player of the Year though. Stetson Bennett gets dangerously close to winning Offensive Rookie. Bro, if he won Offensive Rookie, of the year he would have gone to star dead sixth and best qb i don't know how he did so good in the sim best wide receiver is cooper cup it makes me want to stick with stetson bennett it really does but he's already 26 i can't the 2023 super bowl the raiders beat the eagles super bowl mvp is jimmy garoppolo if stetson bennett got offensive rookie of the year we we could have ran with him as our qb but now he's a 68 overall 26 year old with normal depth. I just can't. Heading into the offseason here, though. Shockingly, we're actually the fourth worst team. The Commanders went 2-15. and 15, Just super weird to me. That is a good team. Broncos went 4-13. and 13, Dolphins went 4-13. and 13, And then it's the Rams. So our draft pick is pick four. And we also need to see where the Patriots landed. And I'm hoping... Oh, no. Damn. Patriots went 10 and 7. So the picks we got from the Patriots, at least this year, aren't as strong as we were hoping. We'll make what we can out of them because, honestly, Aaron Donald wasn't going to change that much for us this year. I still think that our trade was the correct call. Spent some movement on the draft boards. I have 100% completion on the quarterbacks. So it's amazing. I'm going to know exactly who I'm taking. And since we're pick four, if the board went exactly like this, we could take Frank Morgan, Amir Anthony, or Noah Humphreys. And I think I'm leaning towards Frank Morgan out of Cincinnati. He was previously projected to be the round one pick one. He has since fallen. But take a look at this. A medium, A short, A under pressure, B deep. Beautiful spiral on all his passes. Plays well within and outside of the pocket. And quick, compact throwing motion. I want to know. Physicals, his throw power is great to elite. Speed is solid, good. Jumping doesn't matter. Agility doesn't matter. Acceleration doesn't matter. Change of direction doesn't matter. He has A awareness. It actually really good for a quarterback at least overall wise it is b play action is there anything here that's bad deep medium short throw on the run b is actually really good a under pressure this guy's a dog this guy is a dog we just have to hope that he falls there's three picks in front of us if we're not taking frank morgan we're taking amir anthony amir anthony's very very similar his medium accuracy is a C, though, but as deep as an A. Now we can take a look at free agency. Free agency is awesome for us this year. We have tons of cap, and literally every position on our team could use a player. So I'm just going to look for the best available younger guys. Christian Wilkins. He wants a lot of money. 87 overall. He's 28. Mm. My two favorite targets right now are LaVisca Chenault and Kenneth Murray. So Kenneth Murray, 25 years old, star. He doesn't actually expect that much, and he's already kind of interested in our team. I would love to pick him up. This would be a huge addition to those linebackers. I'm going to give him a player-friendly four-year deal. I want to hang on to him for a long time. Four years down the road, I'm hoping in that third or fourth year we can win a Super Bowl. Yeah, we want him for four years. This seems to be a strong deal. I'm going to give him... I'm going to juice it just a little bit. And hey, we should get Kenneth Murray with that. LaVisca Chenault, too. I've always liked LaVisca Chenault as a wide receiver. He's 25. And he's not asking for too much either. I'm actually going to bring his salary down a little bit. I don't really care if LaVisca Chenault doesn't take this. If, if he doesn't want it, that's okay. Yeah, the offer strength is 50-50. If he takes it, sweet. If he doesn't, well, whatever. We can pick up Tyler Biedas for a minor center upgrade. This will be nice because we don't have to draft a center. And Bryce Hall. Oh my God. Bryce Hall is incredibly interested in playing for us. And he developed over that year into superstar. So we could pick up a superstar DB. Right now we have no DBs. I want him for four years. I want everybody for four years. I'm just going to take his salaries and such down because he's so interested in this team. I think he's just going to come anyway. Ugh, that offer strength ain't great. Let's not be cheap. We need our boy. We need our boy. Let's, let's, let's pay him the big bucks. There we go. And I'm good with those signings. This isn't our year to fully unload our cap anyway. We still got a lot, but hopefully if all those guys sign, we're already going to be in a much better position. We draft our rookies. We have another solid year. And then next year, we can really start to unload. Here's the new look Los Angeles Rams. So Avila unlocked Stardev. Bidaz does sign with us. LaVisca Chenault does sign with us. So now it's Van Jefferson, LaVisca Chenault, Cooper Cup. 
On defense, we do get Kenneth Murray, but Bryce Hall has not signed with us. Did he sign somewhere else or is he still thinking? Bryce Hall signs with the Jacksonville Jaguars. I offered him more. I offered him four years, 12 million. He takes a three year, 9 million. He didn't want to be with our poverty ass defense, I guess. Okay, well, it's back to the drawing board for us then. I still need a DB. I really want a DB in free agency. And if I can't get Bryce Hall, I guess I'm going to settle for Levi Wallace. My upgrade was really hoping to get Bryce Hall. Oh, I should have gone bigger on Bryce Hall. I'm such a fucking... I'm so mad we didn't get Bryce Hall. That would have been such a good signing. It's time for the NFL draft. I know exactly who I'm looking for, and it's my Cincinnati quarterback. I just gotta hope that he actually falls to me. Frank Morgan, you will be a Los Angeles Ram. Washington Commanders are on the clock. Nobody take Frank Morgan, and we'll be just fine. They take Tyrone Blackburn, left tackle. So no quarterback. Broncos also also need a quarterback. Russell's got to be so old. Just don't take Frank Morgan. Oh my God, you cut! Oh, he was projected fourth and I'm fourth. They know what I know. Frank Morgan goes to the Denver Broncos. Dominic Morgan, his, uh, his black brother, goes to the Dolphins and it's our pick. Shit. Luckily, we're 100% on all the quarterbacks here. There's Tremaine Branch, Noah Humphreys, Amir Anthony, and Mike Allman. Now, the good news is we know that Tremaine Branch is a bust thanks to scouting. He was projected top five, but he's around three, four talent. Same with Noah Humphreys. So I'm skipping over both of these guys. Amir Anthony or Mike Allman. Mike Allman is a strong arm from Kansas State. Amir Anthony is an improviser from Fresno State with A deep, A short, A under pressure, and C medium accuracy. I think Amir Anthony's our guy. I just, I know he's not as good as Frank Morgan. Frank Morgan had A in everything. Still though, he's got, damn, he's a big quarterback. 6'5", 234. His acceleration is elite. His change of direction is elite. We got a little scrambler QB. 20-yard shot. He's fast. This boy's fast. Wait a minute. All right, so we're getting a little more uh, a little more athleticism out of this. A little less grit, a little more athleticism. We're drafting Amir Anthony at pick four. No, holy shit, he's fast as hell. Amir Anthony, hidden dev, 82 speed, 94. Oh my God, he's literally a running back. This guy is a running back. 90 throw power, 90 excel, 94 change direction 82 speed we'll have to see about his throw stats and his overall but um it's a big upgrade on stetson bennett it has to be if he's in the 70s and he's star it's a big upgrade all right we'll skip ahead to our next pick which is round one pick 17 let's see what talent is available low-key i could have taken a different position because mike allman is still available here there's a few wide receivers but i didn't do scouting on wide receivers and quite frankly Cooper Cup is still amazing. We also signed LaVisca Chenault. So I don't think we go wide receiver here. We obviously don't go quarterback. There's DeAndre Curry, a right tackle. Pass block is a C. Run block's an A. Dude, look at this dude. Karen Jefferson. A awareness. A impact block. A pass block. A to C run block. An agile right tackle. So I'd probably move him to left tackle. And then we could offload Joseph Noteboom, who is sucking up a ton of cap space right now. JD Driver's got some really nice stats too. I think we go Karen Jefferson here. Wow, look at the A's for Karen Jefferson. My pick's gonna be Karen Jefferson, the 21-year-old out of Clemson. Love that he's 21, too. I'll move him to left tackle. He's got 84 excel as a big man. Speed and strength. Strength is actually is pretty damn good. 84 strength right out the gates. Next pick is round two, pick four. We've got tackle. We've got quarterback. If there's some solid defensive potential here, I'm gonna take it. This is a deep, deep quarterback class. Look at this. Humphreys and Chip Cody. <laughs> Elijah Barton looks just like my boy. All the talent that's available is kind of in positions I don't need right now. Although, take a look at Blake Rosenberg out of UCLA. A awareness, A impact, A pass. His run block is trash, though. I almost want to take Rosenberg here and move one of my tackles to guard. He's got good stats. I'm going to take another offensive lineman. I'm going to take Blake Rosenberg here. I'm going to move somebody to guard. There's just not the defensive talent that I need at this spot here. Ooh, much better. Dude, his bench press was so low, I thought his strength was going to be trash. Rosenberg's got 86 strength. He is normal dev, though, so we didn't get a hidden dev guy there. We'll have to see at the end of the draft if we're whiffing or not, but I already like our start here. I, de I need defense with this next pick, though. Dude, there's this wide receiver who had a 42.2-inch vertical. He has an F deep route running. How did you become a wide receiver with F deep route running? I almost want to take a shot on him like a little DK Metcalf, but I need defense. I'm going to take left end Alonzo Harris out of Oregon State. 
Oh, dude, it just lagged and it gave me George Harrison. It gave me that receiver I was making fun of. You know what? I'm excited to see what he's made of, man. I actually am. Now our first pick, the third round. Hopefully there's a defensive player still available here. Alonzo Harris is still available, which is perfect. I was just about to pick him up before. So this works out great. Damn. That is a left end with 65 speed. Oh my God. He has 89 strength, 84 excel. You know what that might be? That might be a deep tackle. We may move him to D-Tag. He's too damn slow to be a left end, but he could be a monster D-Tackle. We're going to advance to the end of the draft here, and we'll see just how well we did. Draft recap! This is the moment of truth! Where did we whiff? Where did we hit? Come on. I need a seven. I need a 70... Five plus quarterback. Amir Anthony? Amir Anthony? 75. Okay. That's an amazing start. Amazing start with Amir Anthony. An 82 speed, 90 excel quarterback. Round one pick four. Starts at a 75 overall. Throw accuracies. Let me see. 86 short, 74 mid, 81 deep. Okay. He's a stud, man. I don't know if you guys do this, but I want to check his dev trait because when I sim, sometimes I don't know if they unlocked star, but then got upgraded to superstar you know, from a breakout or if they actually came with it. So I want to know, is Amir Anthony, is he star or is he superstar? Star, damn it. All right, we'll take it though. 74 of us. I was hoping he'd be a superstar. Karen Jefferson, the right tackle is a 74 overall. And then our other left tackle, Blake Rosenberg, also a 74 overall. Both are 21 years old. Uh, Jefferson was hidden dev though. So he's probably star. Rosenberg was normal. George Harrison is a 73 overall with 89 speed, 88 excel. What's your jumping? I just want to know. His jumping is 96. <laughs> I absolutely whiffed on our boy Alonzo. Alonzo Harris is a 64 four overall that was the worst pick in the draft but damn the cpu took skylar redding outside linebacker out of usc who's a 76 overall right outside linebacker with 87 speed spectacular pick they got Derek thomas right guard who's a 73 overall we got a pretty mid corner and we end with a trash linebacker all in all and actually a really solid draft we added 73 76 73 74 74 75 one major whiff was alonzo harris that's all on me i should have looked deeper at him i would have seen that speed if i had looked at 40 yard dash and all that so i went a little too fast there and that's on me first thing i'm gonna do is move karen johnson to right guard i'm hoping he doesn't take an overall decrease for this but he was a 74 overall at right tackle at right guard karen johnson is a 75 technically 76 six with morale and in just one season it may not be glorious but the los angeles rams have fully revamped the offensive line avila's developing havenstein's our vet jefferson in the draft be it as in free agency and rosenberg in the draft that's amazing i'm also gonna release joseph noteboom i freed 10 in cap space but i incurred a penalty of 10 so I, I think that did nothing to be honest with you guys this is my third rebuild ever and i'm not entirely sure what that did but i know that we don't need him anymore amir anthony is coming along nicely up to a 77 overall already it was the right choice he's star dev he's already eight overalls up on stetson bennett we had to bring amir anthony in is alonzo harris like significantly better at d tackle because he's a 64 overall right now he just sucks i'm moving him to d tackle I, I wonder if that will actually even help this guy he does get an overall boost but not by much we that's just a whiff gotta take the l on that one levi wallace is looking nice john johnson's looking nice jordan fuller did regress to normal dev really wish we got bryce hall damn so my D-line's gonna need some work in the future, but Kenneth Murray, a great free agent signing, and Redding. Dude, the rookie 76 overall outside linebacker, Skyler Redding, out of USC. Same face scan as Stetson Bennett. 87 speed, 87 excel, 87 tackle. Skyler Redding's a dog. This is probably super bold, but I know the slot wide receiver ends up getting a ton of touches. I'm gonna move our rookie Harrison to our slot wide receiver. It's gonna take a lot of catches away from Cooper Cup, but shit. I mean, this guy actually could be a demon wide receiver. He just has, he has amazing intangibles, but dog shit everything else. And low key, he's a little slow too. He has 96 jumping and he's six foot two. I kind of want him to be really good. So it's shaping up to be a weird rebuild, but I think I'm most proud of our offensive line. To make sure Sean McVay doesn't get fired, I'm gonna shoot for four wins. Best case scenario is offensive rookie of the year goes to Amir Anthony. And season two shapes up just like season one, five and 12. I can't say I'm upset at all by that. We're gonna have a very similar draft pick. Hopefully we can either get some elite talent for our rookie QB or maybe an elite defensive lineman. Standings around the league, the Lions were the worst team in the league and the Raiders, the Falcons, the Jets, the Commanders, and then the Rams. So we're gonna end 
end up here with the sixth pick. MVP of the league goes to Dak. Defensive player of the year. Oh no, defensive player of the year goes to Aaron Donald, who I traded to the Patriots. Oh no. The big question here is offensive rookie of the year. What? What? Oh my God, it went to George Harrison. Oh my God. Wait, so Amir Anthony gets third. Mike Allman, the late pick quarterback, gets second. Where's Frank Morgan? Oh my God, they did nothing with Frank Morgan. That makes me so mad. You took Frank Morgan over me. You did nothing with him. Defensive rookie of the year. Doesn't look like we have anybody on here. No shocker there. Actually, no. Skyler Redding's eighth. And Sweeney, that DB, ends up 10th. Not bad. George Harrison, fifth and best wide receiver voting. That is so funny. Byron Young, our very young linebacker, gets fourth for best linebacker. And Levi Wallace is second in best DB. So a nice year for Levi Wallace. Five and 12 again. Shit. So now I got to see our progression for our guys. So I kind of know what happened. We gave George Harrison so many reps, so many looks, but obviously he couldn't do as much with them as Cooper Cup would have. So even though he's in that slot, he, he eclipses a thousand yards, but his average yards per game was 67.8 last year. Cooper Cup, even with Stetson Bennett was a hundred. Cup still was amazing with the touches he did get. But honestly, we progressed George Harrison really well. So that's probably the move. Chanel had 656, Higby 573. Cam Akers in receiving. Von Deversen did almost nothing. Cam Akers, another 1,000-yard season, five touchdowns. Amir Anthony, almost 100 carries, 400 yards, three touchdowns. Nice work. Passing Amir Anthony, 3,678 yards, 24 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Yeah, Stetson Bennett kind of played better than him last year. But keep in mind, Cooper Cup was wide receiver one last year. I put in George Harrison to develop them both. That might have been a bad call. Maybe I should have kept Cooper Cup in so Amir Anthony was always throwing to the best guy. Not sure if I made the right call, but we did go 5-12. and 12. If Cooper Cup was one, we might have won more games. So I almost I'm almost tanked more properly this way. Amir Anthony's a 79 overall. Cam Akers is progressing very well. Uh, Jefferson's progressing well at guard. Harrison technically hasn't won Offensive Rookie of the Year yet, so he didn't get a dev trade upgrade, but he's rocking a 75 overall and no dev trade adjustments on defense. Really hoping Skylar Redding can get star. 2024 season ends with the Kansas City Chiefs winning a Super Bowl. Mahomes is MVP. And damn, you see this a lot, Cowboys versus Chiefs. And the Offensive Rookie of the Year. Oh my God, I was only looking on the NFC side. Of course, I didn't see Frank Morgan. Frank Morgan wins Offensive Rookie of the Year with the Broncos. Shit, I always forget that those are bracketed by, oh my God, George Harrison does not get Offensive Rookie of the Year. It does go to Frank Morgan, who the Broncos sniped from me. Oh, I should have traded up. Oh, there's a lot of regret in this rebuild right now. All right, hey, there's nothing we can do about it right now. It's time to head into free agency. Hey, it's time to resign players that we need and head into free agency. When I look at free agents, there's not a lot of people I want. Want. The best free agent is Joe Burrow, but I'm not going for that. Eric Armstead's available. My D-line is depleted. And when I looked at the draft class, there's not a lot of good D-tackles. At least not anybody that's going to fall to me. So let's sign Eric Armstead to a two-year deal. Beef up our D-line. We're going to pay a lot of money for this year. I think it's important that our D-line isn't atrocious. We want to actually start winning some games. I'm going to pick up a kicker too. I'm going to pick up Jake Elliott. My current kicker is a 69 overall. So why not give Jake Elliott a three-year deal? We got... We got some free agency space for it. I have literally 130 million in cap room though. I just, there's nobody that I want. I don't want Burrow. Hassan Reddick? Hassan Reddick would actually be pretty dope. We would have Redding, Hassan Reddick, and Kenneth Murray. That's a really good backer core. Hassan Reddick has no interest in my team. But what if we gave him a very friendly deal? Giving Hassan Reddick, the 30-year-old Hassan Reddick, a six-year deal. I'm going to give Hassan Reddick a massive offer. We have so much cap room. It's yellow in offer strength. I don't know if he takes that, but we have so many young guys on this team that we actually have the cap space to do some shit like that. I don't think we win too big this year anyway. Now, here's my strategy for the draft. So in the draft, we do have round one, pick six, but I think my favorite prospect is the 14th cornerback. I want to get a DB and a D lineman. There are no good D linemen in the first round, sadly, but look at this dude, okay? This is a six foot three corner. A catching, B man, B press, B zone. That doesn't look too crazy. He's 21 years old, he's 209. So that is a big, heavy corner. His 40 yard dash was a 429. His speed is elite. His agility is elite. 
and he's six foot three. So I'm thinking he has at least, at least 93 speed, 94 speed. His vert's a 38, his broad jump, 10-5. He just has to be fast as shit. So in the first round, it should be very realistic for me to pick Kyle Towns up. And then in the second round, I'm just looking for the best D lineman available. There's Rodney White at the top. There's Ben Hale. There's Gabe Hooker and Jamison Finney. So whichever one of those guys is available, we'll take a look at them. But it'll be a defensive draft for us, for sure. Jamal Jackson goes to the Commanders, round one pick six. Please tell me nobody sharked my boy. There's absolutely no way somebody took him. Dude, I'm getting robbed. Luckily, there is a good second option, Jamarcus Broyles. But he also is the fastest 40-yard dash DB. Technically, after Kyle Towns, he's now the fastest. He has elite speed still. I really do. Oh my God, I'm getting sniped by the CPU. Oh wait, holy shit, he is 6'3". Wait a minute. This is a great second option. Jamarcus Broyles, 6'3". He's a little less heavy. He's 22. Towns is probably better, but Jamarcus Broyles, I'll take here. Jamarcus Broyles with 96 speed. Oh my God, a, a 96 speed 6'3"? Bro, bro, I was hoping Towns would be 93. All right, boys. Hey, it worked out. Worked out just fine. 96 speed, 90 excel. Monster DB in the first round. Oh shit, I forgot I have two first rounds. Holy shit, I forgot I have two first rounds. Dude, what do we think about this tight end? I have round one pick 11 right now. We do have Higby, but he just looks too good to pass up. Elite strength, elite speed, elite agility. We could take him and we could trade Tyler Higby for potentially more draft capital in the next draft. Philip McCauley. It's not the position we need. I think I'm going to take McCauley here and maybe, maybe get a tackle later. I'm taking him. I want to see what this dude's all about. Ooh, damn. He's normal dev, but he's a fast ass six foot six tight end. And he's big, man. He's six foot six. I might, I probably should have gone with a tackle there, but I just wanted to get weird with it in the draft. You know, he just looked too good. Now I said, I want D line. Johnny Morrow is an elite speed D tackle. There's no left or right ends that I can really get. I, I, I was unable to get any of these guys that I wanted in the second round. They got taken, but Morrow's fast. I might be able to move him to an edge rusher. Ooh, hidden dev. Hidden dev in the second round. 79 speed, 78 excel, 86 strength. He could get moved to an edge rusher. No question about it. And he's hidden dev. Johnny Morrow might've been a real good pick right there. I think I whiffed a little bit on Philip McCauley. So we kind of needed that get back right there. And thanks to the Patriots, we have another good pick here. This is all the capital from Aaron Donald. So I'm hoping we can turn it into some serious stuff here. Julius Gandy has has dropped on a lot of people's boards. He does not look good. His impact block, his nice awareness, pass and run are bad. I don't really need anything else. I do need a right tackle because Havenstein retired. 86 strength, normal dev. We'll have to see his overall. We'll have to see his overall before we can gauge that pick. 2024 draft is in. This is a huge moment. Our draft recap. Come on, baby. Come on. Yes. Oh my God. All 70 plus on everybody. Jamarcus Broyles, if that's my whiff, if this is who I whiffed on, I'm fine with it, man. I lost Kyle Towns, but I ended up settling for a 78 overall corner who has 96 speed. This guy's a dog. Totally fine with that. Philip McCauley is a 75 overall tight end with 87 speed. I think that's awesome. That should be good for Amir Anthony. Morrow, damn, kind of thought Morrow was going to be a nasty pickup. He ends up only being a 70 overall. Gandy's a 71, so our second round wasn't as strong as I had hoped. We picked up a rookie halfback who's a 76 overall. Denzel Smith, a 72 middle linebacker. Quincy Mackey, a 73 D tackle. Another 76 overall halfback and another tight end here in the final round. Like I said, though, I am going to move Johnny Morrow to an edge rusher. And luckily, he's at the very least star because he's hidden dev. Going to move him to left end. And I just have to check what you Jamarcus Broyles. Is Jamarcus Broyles a superstar? Dude, he's a 78 overall. Come on. It's higher than Amir Anthony. Oh, he's star. Damn it. Hasn't been my absolute best drafting, but still, dude, a 96 speed, eight, six foot three corner is actually ridiculous. Listen, man, not everything has gone our way, but I actually love the new look Rams. Cooper Cup has now finally regressed in overall and dev trait, but George Harrison is now star, and we've still got LaVisca Chanel. I think in this upcoming draft, we definitely got to take a wide receiver, though. I've got two stud rookie halfbacks and two stud rookie tight ends. So I'm looking to trade Tyler Higby and Cam Akers 
hopefully get more draft picks for this upcoming draft. And then on defense, new look defense is awesome. Hassan Reddick does sign with us. Absolute unit. Byron Young is still star, so when Hassan Reddick's out, he can step right on in. Got our new rookie middle linebacker. Then Jamarcus Broyles. Demon, man. I can't wait to see him progress. Got Durant. And then Sweeney as well with Eric Armstead, who signed in free agency. And uh, Joseph Morrow has moved to left end, and he's a 71 overall there. Dude, look at our cap room. We have 120 mil in cap room. Jesus. I'm going to sign the biggest free agency signing ever this year. First and foremost, though, Cam Akers. I don't really need you anymore. 88 overall, he's worth a lot. And next year, he's going to want to get paid. Along with Tyler Higby, who's, I guess, 32. He might not be worth as much. Let's find a team that needs a running back. This is a super weird trade, but Cam Akers, a round three and a round one pick for Marlon Humphrey. The Ravens are already in negative cap space. Marlon Humphrey's eating up a ton of that. He's also 29, so he's a little older, but he's a 96 overall corner. I could beef up the defense, get rid of Cam Akers, who I don't need with all my good rookie running backs, and a 2027 20, first round. Oh, no, I need to low ball harder. I need to low ball harder. See, I was just about to give up first round pick when I might not have needed to. Dude, trading is busted. This shit is busted. This is busted. How the fuck is Cam Akers? Like, do I not know ball? Or am I fleecing the shit out of the Ravens right now? So I could probably put in just some dog water pick, huh? Let's go 2027 round three and 2027 round four. I probably don't even need to put in round... F I could have done round seven or something, right? We're fleecing. This is a fleece. Whatever, man. You don't bite the hand that feeds you. Marlon Humphrey is a Los Angeles Ram. We give up some late round capital uh, this year and next year, but whatever. Well, fuck it, we ball. All right, it's time to mess with our depth chart for 2025. <laughs> we signed Mitch Trubisky. Get the fuck out of here. Andrew Pratt will be our starter. 92 speed, 90 excel. I like it. Antoine Garner, though. 83 break tackle. Macaulay is starting tight end. Higby moves down in the depth chart. I like that. We'll go Cooper Cup as the starter. I want George Harrison to be bat, to be second string. Rosenberg is perfect. I could actually see a serious record improvement for us this year. We have two huge... Huge defense signings. And our quarterback's a lot better. I'm going to shoot for seven wins. This might be a little aggressive, but we have an easy schedule too. So I don't hate it. A few moments later. Damn, we're getting smacked around in 2025 too. Hey, the whole NFC West is dog shit though. So I guess technically we could make the playoffs. I did notice though, this rookie guard that we got, Derek Thomas, he's a 76 overall. He's actually a better tackle than the tackle I drafted this year. I'm going to switch him to right tackle. The Lions make the Super Bowl in 2025. The Chiefs get another ring. Mahomes gets another ring. I've seen this before. Lamar gets MVP. Henry Meekins of the Lions is Offensive Rookie of the Year. And the Defensive Rookie of the Year! Oh my god! Johnny Morrow, the D-tackle I drafted, switched to left end, wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. Monster! Let's go! Steelers were the first team in the league at 15-2. and two. Didn't do anything with it, though. Impressively, the Lions were 10-7, and seven, went all the way to the Super Bowl. Could be like this year in real life. I gotta say, though, the Rams had a massive step up this year. We had a positive record. Nine wins, eight losses. We completed our season goal of seven wins. Let's see how our players did. Amir Anthony takes a huge leap in his second year. Eclipses 4,000 yards. 32 and 11 is a huge improvement. A 106 above a 100 QBR. That's amazing. Cooper Cup. Oh, my God. He has another monster season. He leads all receivers in the NFL with 1,674 yards. Definitely the right call to have Cooper Cup be the primary tiny regression from his first season but he's already 32 now so this is still really impressive george harrison almost hits a thousand yards as the backup lavisca chanel played solid and philip mccauley in his first year 44 receptions 423 averaging almost 10 yards per catch uh and four receiving touchdowns nice work how did our rookie running back do andrew pratt had almost a thousand yards, one touchdown. Uh, Amir Anthony had two. And the backup, whoa! Do we start the backup? Antoine Garner had nine rushing touchdowns. Dude, coach sees something in Antoine Garner that I am not seeing. He has, dude, this is insane though. Look at this. On 87 carries, he has 18 broken tackles. On Pratt's 250, he has 24. Antoine Garner earned the starting position. I gotta know how Johnny Morrow won Defensive Rookie of the Year, though. He had 59 tackles, 14 TFLs, and seven and a half sacks. Armstead also had 14 TFLs, 
but that's on one and a half sacks. He led my team in sacks. Oh no, Hassan Reddick had 13. Reddick was awesome. That was a huge signing. But Johnny Morrow, great job. That's how you win Defensive Rookie of the Year. He should have gotten some nice upgrades too. He has three additional skill points here. I'm going to give him power rush on all of them. More tackle, more hit power, power moves, and pursuit. And the final one will give him finesse, play rec, power moves, speed, and tackle. That's an awesome upgrade right there. He's still normal, Dev. I assume after the season's over for getting defensive rig of the year, he'll go star. 80 speed, 78 excel, 89 power moves. Stud! The rebuild's coming together. It's coming together, boys. And with $112 million in cap space, we can make a massive free agent signing. And as I say that, the free agent market is dog shit this year maybe i should have picked up joe burrow last year this is a funny signing but there's a rookie fullback brandon pierce who's 79 overall i actually want him on my team <laughs> i'm thinking of dude there's nobody what i mean we could trade for somebody i guess but this is a weak free agent market alante taylor is low-key a nasty db 95 speed and he's 27 but i got dbs man i'm gonna pick up romeo dubes i'm gonna pick up romeo dubes in free agency he's 80 overall 26 93 speed dude how do you say his last name Dobbs give him a four-year deal we need him LaVisca Chenault left in free agency he'll replace him but I kind of I want to draft a wide receiver because Cooper Cup's gonna be out of here pretty soon man dude but when you look at our lineup it's like damn I was hoping there'd be like a, a monster 95 overall free agent but like it just there isn't there's nobody to sign Cooper Cup got his x-factor back Nice work. Garner is the starter. Looks like looks like the depth chart knew that Garner was the guy to go with. Dude, like, who, who would I even sign in free agency? We have good players. I guess I could take a backer, eventually a safety. Eric Armstead's regress, so we actually do need D-line. Nobody in free agency. Shit. I think a big mistake I made was I was so worried about cap space that I'm offloading players and trading them, but in reality, I have, like, infinite cap room right now. I could have kept a lot of good players. I could have kept Aaron Donald for a while. I should have taken a Hail Mary in free agency in year one or year two. But I guess in 2026, hopefully there's better free agents. It's time for the 2026 NFL Draft. We focused our scouting on wide receiver. Because Cooper Cup is getting to a point where he's either going to retire or just continue to regress. At my pick, there's some linebackers and halfbacks up high, but I don't need either. I really don't. My wide receiver options are two. There's Daniel Lockley, a 6'2 wide receiver out of Iowa State. My concern about him is his release is D. Deep route running D to F. Catch and traffic D catches B. I don't like him so much, but a little bit further down is Eddie Douglas, who also just doesn't look that good but at least his deep route is a b i've only got five seconds left to pick i'm gonna go with eddie douglas i don't think either of these guys are that great hidden dev so he's at least star 95 change of direction is disgusting 94 excel 92 speed that's actually really good and he's a six foot two playmaker a little white chunk that's it that's a literal cooper cup replacement too because i took the i don't know he looks kind of mexican almost but whatever i took the white gritty wide receiver a to b break tackle a to b ball carry vision a to b injury medium routes okay spectacular catches an a a hard a eddie douglas all right eddie don't have too many picks in this draft and they're kind of late here i don't even get a third rounder but with this pick i gotta take the line Morrow's pretty good at D tackle be great. D tackle be really nice. My best option here is Leon Montgomery. He's got A power moves. I just don't see any reason to take another position. 6'3, 23, University of South Florida. Leon Montgomery? I don't know about that. 89 strength is actually pretty solid for D tackle. 73 speed, 81 excel. Normal dev. We just gotta hope Eddie Gonzalez was the right pick. I think the biggest dopamine rush I get during a rebuild is when I hit A on draft recap. The draft recap! Cap. Eddie Douglas, okay, nothing crazy, nothing bad either. Also, Leon Montgomery is a 73 overall D tackle, so that's not bad. Probably our weakest overall draft so far. Jose Marshall, left guard, 73, not bad. In the fourth round, too, that's a that's a very nice pickup, actually. Let me get 69 outside linebacker, Darren Irving, and Joey O'Neal. Nothing too special. Eddie Douglas, though, 95 change of direction is hilariously good. Uh, his, his spectacular catches 86 he is hidden dev though please bro please i have not yet gotten a single superstar i know it's hard to draft a superstar so i don't expect him to be and this is pretty this is actually pretty late in the second round player trades oh! 
Yes! Yes, Eddie Douglas is, oh my God, it's literally Cooper Cup's replacement. Eddie Douglas is a dog. He's a 75 overall. I want him to be Offensive Rookie of the Year. He's everything George Marshall wished he could be. Heading into 2026, could we actually make a playoff run at this point? My season goal is once again seven wins. Not trying to get Sean McVay fired out here. Here's the squad right now. We are almost entirely filled with auto-generated players. The only remaining real players are Avila, Biadaz, Cooper Cup, Romeo Dobbs, who we just got. Hassan Reddick has gone up to Superstar. Congrats to him. Morrow did not get a dev trade upgrade for Defensive Rookie of the Year, which is a shocker. Jamarcus Broyles is up to an 83. And pretty soon here, we might need a new free safety. I really, I do like this team a lot. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I probably needed to draft D-line earlier. I actually have like too many good offensive linemen. I have multiple young, solid offensive linemen. I am moving Eddie Douglas to my starting slot wide receiver. He is a superstar. This young in his career, he's going to develop so well. We've got all this extra O-line talent. Let's see if we can't get an edge rusher off of a team. The Buccaneers really need a tackle. I'm going to try and give up my young tackle, Julius Gandy, who I took in the second round, and then a six and seven pick to sweeten the deal. They don't give a shh shit about what I just offered. How are we going to get Kalaji Kansi? Would you do it for a second round pick? Holy guy, I'm such a fucking, oh my god, I'm such a piece of shit. Dude, they fully nuked my last offer, I thought that. And the 2026 season closes with, guess who? Kansas City Chiefs win another one, beat the Eagles. No offensive or defensive rookie of the year for us. This was a really bad season, actually. We regressed. When, once we hit 9-8, and eight, I thought we were on the right trajectory we fall back to 5 and 12 all hope is not lost for the rams though i think the greatest thing you'll notice if you're a rams fan is superstar amir anthony now i'm gonna be honest i have literally no idea how this happened but eddie douglas was superstar and somehow the season turned out so poorly for him that he regressed all the way to normal like i, I genuinely didn't even know that that was possible romeo dubes went up to star so that's nice george harrison still star but eddie douglas how, how did you go from superstar to star 142 million cap space no wonder we can't win i'm the world's cheapest gm i got 142 million cap space I'm going to sign every free agent known to man. Dude, I'm sick of these bum wide receivers in the draft. Do I just, do I just sign Zay Flowers to a fat deal? I could get Marvin Mims for significantly cheaper, but I've kind of got the money to just do as I please here. I'm going to offer Zay Flowers some crazy money here. I'm giving Zay Flowers a very player-friendly deal. The offer strength is strong. He may do it. I'm sick. I'm sick of Eddie Douglas. Superstar Eddie Douglas going to normal. Marcus Williams wouldn't be the worst signing either. We're just picking up all these Ravens players. I'll give him a player-friendly deal. I'm also going to give DeForest Buckner a deal. It's just, it's just like the Eric Armstead signing. I don't expect him to stick around for a long time. I do want him on the squad right now. It's also Anton Harrison, a star 25-year-old left tackle. I'm picking him up too. Might move him to right tackle depending on our team needs. Got to give him a juicy deal if he's going to sign. Only one free agent sign with us, and that's DeForest Buckner. I'm safetyless. Oh my God, this team is falling apart. Defense, I'm missing a safety. I got to draft a safety, actually. 2027 NFL draft. We have round one pick six. The only thing is there's only one safety in this entire draft who's even round one talent. So I either take this dude or I reach deep into the second. So he's either good or we completely whiff here. It's Damar Irving. He's a gigantic free safety. 6'3", 252. What kind of free safety? Hold up. Biggest safety in NFL history. This is the biggest safety in NFL history. All right. Well, Cam Chancellor was 6'3", 240. This is like basically Cam Chancellor. Holy shit. He's huge. Okay. Hey, we got ourselves a little Cam Chancellor. Damar Irving. 91 excel, 91 speed. That's pretty good. He's hitting devs, so he's star, superstar. That's really, really good news. Um, our next pick is that's around five. We traded away all these picks. We have to win this season. Oh, shit, 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 shit. Cancel. No. Oh, I need to see the draft recap. Well, 
I basically only got one player, so let's go learn about him right now. Damar Irving, our free safety out of Oklahoma. He has 91 speed, 77 zone, 91 excel. Zone is pretty good. He's almost kind of like a zone safety. Okay hit power, block shedding and play record all right. Good pursuit. To mid say he's a 77 overall. He's at least star dev. I'm excited about Damar Irving. Going into the 2027 season, <laughs> we have to start winning, man. I've got a superstar Amir Anthony at quarterback superstar at Fresno State. He's got excellent accuracies. He's 82 speed, 90 excel. He is ready to win. I just need everybody else to be ready to win. Wait a minute. It's mid-season. I was checking in on our players. Damar Irving is a superstar. And for the first time ever, we have positive team morale and we're up to an 86 overall offensive line is looking spectacular because we're winning games right now. We are seriously winning games. A four and three record at mid-season. The Niners lead the NFC West, but this is really, really good for us. It's, it's, it's amazing. Let's close this season out strong. We might actually make the playoffs. I don't think we'll win the NFC West. Best, but we definitely could make the playoffs here. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> the 49ers fell off a cliff. The Niners, who were six and one, choke. And the Rams are 13 and four. What? We lost one game the rest of the season. Oh my God. Let's see how our team did. Amir Anthony is fourth in the NFL in passing yards, 10th. Damn, why is Andrew Pratt getting yards? I started Garner. I think I have auto reorder depth chart. That's all. Amir Anthony, 4,491 passing yards, 74% completion, 114 QBR. Amir Anthony balling out. Pratt seems to continue to get starter over Gardner, and Gardner has 18 touchdowns. This shit makes no sense to me. I need to turn off auto reorder depth chart. Auto reorder depth chart is so nice, though, when you're, like, picking up rookies and going through seasons. But here, it's like, bro, my boy Gardner's got to go. But I guess both running backs are kind of going off, so whatever. Do your thing. We got a little running back duo. They got the same face scan anyway, bro. It's the same guy. Cooper Cup. I'm so glad we didn't trade him. He's insane, man. He actually is insane. Eddie Douglas doing a whole lot of nothing, man. Nothing. Dubes a solid season. Philip McCauley a really good season. George Harrison balled out. And then Cooper Cup with 1,772. He averaged more yards per game this season than in his very first Superstar X Factor 99 overall season. So that's awesome. Just less touchdown. Defensively, Kenneth Murray leads our team in tackles. Then it's Denzel Smith, the second year player. Jordan Fuller, Demar Irving, 72 at TFL. No interceptions for Demar Irving, though. I was kind of hoping he'd get a little more. Hassan Reddick had 14 sacks. DeForest Buckner had 11. Johnny Morrow had seven. Skyler Redding had two. Kalaja Kansi had three and a half. Kalaja Kansi, underwhelming. I thought that trade was going to be really nice for us, but Morrow continues to play well. The free agency signing of DeForest Buckner was really nice, though. 14 TFLs and 11 sacks, so can't be mad there. Jake Elliott, solid year. I really did not expect that this year, dude. The, the Rams rebuild is throwing me a lot of curveballs. I can tell you that much. We actually got a bye. We don't even have a wild card game. So everybody's feeling good. Everybody's got these big overall boosts. Amir Anthony is boosted from a 93 to a 98. It's almost a damn 99. Demar Irving is our only superstar on defense, but everybody's just doing really, really well. Jamarcus Broyles is up to an 87 overall and uh marlon humphrey also has a skill point everything leads up to this playoff game against 99 overall bryce young the 13 and 4 rams take on the 9 and 8 panthers they snuck into the playoffs and get past the wild card panthers have bryce young brian burns aquanu jc horn Derek brown chin jamie mccants 94 speed wide receiver all right we'll sim this game i can only step in if it's a one possession game if we're getting smoked i'm not allowed to step in 88 overall rams take on the panthers in the divisional let's go panthers score to open this up rams score in return seven to six panthers get another field goal nine to seven we get a field goal ten to nine panthers score 16 to 10 oh no Oh no, 24 to 10. Are the Panthers really going to knock us out right now? Oh, Rams score. I, I can't step in right now. If we get a drive, I'll step in. 17 to 24. It's third and two. I'm going to step in. Look at this squad, man. Amir Anthony and Cooper Cup leading the charge. We're going to go with a run to our boy Pratt. He's got a lot of room. A big juke. It's first and 10. I could step in for the third and two, but I'm not allowed to do anything else. I'm just going to let him go, man. I feel bad even stepping in. It's fourth and four come on rams i can't see you got this yo they scored 
The Rams scored. It's 24 to 24. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I can watch. 24 to 24. The Panthers are in field goal range. We've used all of our timeouts. Oh, no. They're just going to milk the clock. Oh, no. They're just going to milk the clock till the game's out. Miles Sanders runs for five. Hey, I'm just glad we made a playoff push, man. They call a timeout with 11 seconds. Here, Oh, just shank it. Just shank that shit. Or go block it, boys. Come on. Field goal's up. It looks like he drilled it. He absolutely drills it. Here's the kickoff with eight seconds. You know, a miracle could happen. A miracle could happen. The kick return. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. To win. To win the division. <laughs> Sweetie, the DB, a rookie DB from our first draft, Carrie Sweetie. Oh my God, he did not. Dude, that was like the best moment of my life. Oh my God, you can't say shit about me stepping in, man. I stepped in and ran halfback stretch on third and two and that is it. Oh my God, no. <laughs> Dude, that's so insane. That's insane. I've never... Oh, my God. Now it's the NFC Championship. Let's go. There's no way this is our Super Bowl year, right? This should be a Cinderella story. We win it right now. Take it on the Vikings. They're 11-6. 89 overall. We're in 88. Boys, if you watched all the way to this point in the video and got to see that kick return, you're witnessing history. Oh, that was just one of the coolest moments I've ever seen. First quarter, Vikings get a field goal. Rams may score here. We sh we missed the field goal. Jake Elliott makes the next one. It's 3-3. Three to three, Low scoring NFC championship Ooh, vikings score on fourth down vikings are taking it to us 13 to 3 is not looking good for the rams right now our cinderella run may be over maybe another field goal from jake elliott vikings score again i think the cinderella story is over man okay wait a minute 20 to 13 vikings are milking the clock they score again that game wasn't close enough for me to feel like i could have stepped in 23 to 13 we fall in the nfc championship but nobody will forget nobody will forget sweeney's kick return in the divisional and the 13 and 4 Rams are very ready for another winning season. Hey, I don't feel bad now because those Vikings who took us down, they narrowly won the Super Bowl. So it was the best team. Defensive rookie of the year is Devin Jarrett of the Bears. Offensive rookie of the year is Morris Gerard of the Patriots. Bijan gets offensive player of the year and Mahomes gets another MVP. God, just suck him off. Why don't you? Here's the team prior to free agency. Amir Anthony's got himself boosted to a 99 and Cooper Cup. Cup retired. <gasps> Cooper Cup retired? No. Damn, I really wanted to get another Super Bowl while Cooper Cup was here. On defense, dude, this is so weird. DeMar Irving loses his superstar, but Marlon Humphrey gets it back. I don't understand the progression here at all. DeForest Buckner regresses. Hassan Reddick regresses but they're both they both still have really good core overalls Kalaja Kansi's up to an 86 so he's progressing well and Maro's playing really well too we have good base overalls I have two D dot Irving safeties so in free agency I need a strong safety and hopefully a wide receiver it's like there's a lot of DBs but I don't really need DBs come on Alex Toon an 88 overall left tackle who's 25 what this guy's a monster who's the best wide receiver available there ain't shit available for wide receiver man look at this dude bro alex riddick a 74 overall 24 year old with 98 speed there is kai hobbs who's 78 like a much higher overall 96 speed do you think that 98 speed's like good enough for this to be worth it he's also 24 dude i'm gonna try this dude alex riddick his interest in my team is negative but if you throw enough money at a guy shit money talks baby dude there's just no good free agents i was really hoping for big free agent markets i'm gonna pick up alex toon how do you pass on a 25 88 star even if your offensive line is good man he's already interested in our team I might be able to trade one of my other guys to potentially get a safety kirby joseph is available i think we pick him up and move him to strong safety yeah just gotta make him a fat deal we got the cap space for it i'm also gonna pick up quinn miners and we're just gonna make a big trade with the guards that we have gosh there's just not a lot in free agency we were unable to get quinn miners in free agency but dude we got this monster alex toon at left tackle young 88 overall star that's such a good signing I can't believe he was even a free agent. Uh, Rosenberg moves to right tackle. Jefferson's in. Biedaz and Avila. Such a good offensive line. Kirby Joseph does sign with us as well. A former Lion. I really like Kirby Joseph as is. He still has room to improve. I just need to move him to strong safety. 
because that's the hole in our defense. We've got a nice mix of veteran players and current studs as well. Marlon Humphrey, Kirby Joseph, DeForest Buckner, Hassan Reddick, and then the rest of these guys are either mid-age or very young. I'm, so, I'm just sad we didn't get a lot of superstars, not a lot of dev trade upgrades so far for our squad, but I'm happy with what we got. We still have the draft. The only thing is I'm round one, pick 30, because we finally played really, really well. I don't expect there to be a superstar here. I wouldn't hate drafting a wide receiver, but damn, the amount of times I've whiffed on wide receiver makes me mad. Amari Ford is sitting here right for me. He's six. 3, 219 out of Washington. His skills are really bad. His speed is good. Agility is great. Team direction is great. Looks like a strong wide receiver. A spectacular catch. Amari Ford. Noah Kingsbury out of Florida has elite speed. 4 2 5 40 at the college pro day. I'm taking Noah Kingsbury. I feel like Amari Ford might be the better pick here, but no. Oh, oh, oh. Oh my God. I've never seen this before. <laughs> Dude ran a 4.25 in the 40 at the college pro day. He's a 99, hard 99 speed, 91 except bro. He's a normal dev. This guy's gonna be a fucking maniac. Oh shit, sorry, sorry to Riddick. Sorry to that other dude I got. Oh my God. I'm advancing straight to the end of the draft. I need to see this guy. Time for the draft recap. Always the best time. Okay, maybe I overreacted. He's not as good as I anticipated. He's only a 66 overall with 99 speed. How do you fuck with that, man? 99 speed? Just send him on a... Just give him a fucking heater. Going into the season, Amir Anthony, 97 overall. Andrew Pratt is an 89 with 93 speed. Pratt's definitely halfback one. Wide receivers, my technical wide receiver one is George Harrison, but I'm gonna move Dobbs up there. I'm gonna take Noah Kingsbury, move him to wide receiver two. Kingsbury is also our kick return and punt returner. And I'm gonna move Kingsbury to my slot wide receiver. We're putting a lot of faith in Kingsbury having a good season because right now we really just don't have good threats for Amir Anthony. But 99 speed, I just feel like he has to have a great season. Another 14 and three season for the Rams. Amazing work here. But wow, I'm starting to realize that just because my wide receiver had 99 speed did not mean he was gonna be good. And without Cooper Cup, we're noticing how tough this is. So receiving Kingsbury did eclipse a thousand, but only nine touchdowns 66.9 yards per game i mean that's not even close to cooper cup who did 112 in his best season uh dobbs almost hit a thousand douglas okay eddie douglas finally having a halfway decent season and um that's pretty much it i don't think i can stick to noah kingsbury anymore we have like a serious wide receiver dilemma here over with the rams but rushing andrew pratt takes a massive leap very well outperforming garner 10 touchdowns though to his 11 a thousand a hundred rushing yards on the season continues to eclipse a thousand so that's good. And defensively, Kenneth Murray continues to be our tackle leader. Marlon Humphrey had a very good season. Another 14 sacks out of Hassan Reddick. Leon Montgomery, the D tackle, was seven and a half. Morrow was six. Buckner, five and a half. Kalaji Kansi, three and a half. Kalaji Kansi, not doing shit. Once again, a buy in the wild card. Dude, can I sign a free agent wide receiver? That's all we need. We take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the divisional. I don't know if we've got what it takes to win a Super Bowl this season, but Amir Anthony is damn near 99 overall. My offensive line has got to be one of the best in the league. I just need an elite superstar wide receiver for this man. Rams score first. Tampa Bay gets a field goal. Rams about to score again. Ooh, this might be an easy divisional for us here. Oh, no. Buccaneers return. Rams are marching. Fourth and one. Hit the field goal. 10 to 17. Another big field goal. Hit it. 20 to 17. This is so close. Third and nine. Fourth and nine. Ooh, we barely hung on. Holy shit, we barely hung on. 17 to 20. Amir Anthony gets the dub. Let's go. Oh my God, it's an NFC Championship rematch against the Vikings. Ooh, are we gonna lose to them again? A Rams-Vikings rivalry is spawning in the playoffs. First quarter's not even done. Okay, there we go. Come on, Rams. Don't let them do this. Yes! 21 to 14. No way Amir Anthony's actually going to carry this dog shit receiver core. 21 to 20. 28 to 21. Stop him, defense. No. 28 to 28. No, I got to let him do it. I just got to let him do it. Come on, big field goal. Hit it. Yes. 31 to 35. Amir Anthony's in no huddle. Rifles it out. We need a touchdown here, though. No. Amir Anthony sacked. We're in no huddle. It's third and 12. Somehow the clock is not running. 100%. Ooh, rifle. Hit him. Go! Get up to the line! Oh no! Amir Anthony.
that he rifled it, but out of timeouts. And the Rams lose again in the NFC Championship to the Minnesota Vikings. Damn it! Please, let there be a free agent. If there's not a free agent, I'm trading everything for a monster. This is our year to win the Super Bowl. We are unloading whatever we can to get Amir Anthony, a superstar wide receiver. He's down to star. How? He just went to the NFC Championship. How are we losing superstars like crazy? Let's see the available free agents. We've got the cap room for some monsters. Who? are you he's a 94 overall but he's only star he's only got 90 speed i might trade for somebody super legit christian watson's looking for a new team he's 86 overall he's 30 now christian watson can join damn quentin nelson wants to play with us let's go quentin nelson lastly an old montez sweat is looking for a contract we'll pick him up for a super bowl run i've basically put the rams in the same position they used to be in i do not care about this draft i straight up don't i'm putting my first round pick in which isn't too valuable and i'll throw in a halfway decent wide receiver and i'm gonna throw george harrison in as part of this deal you take a look at reishi rice oh my god he's turned into a demon He's a 99 overall X Factor. George Harrison, 85 overall, and my round one pick for Rishi Rice. He's old. I don't feel Auburn brings enough value. They want a little bit more for him. No, we're right there. What if I offered you my 2030 fifth round pick as well? All those late picks in 2030 shit. Oh, we're right there. Once you get my 2030 round four, and you're just ready to give it up. 98 overall superstar X Factor, Rishi Rice. He's a Los Angeles Ram. George Harrison, Riddick, my first round pick this year. Okay, we don't we don't gotta we don't gotta draft now. Going into 2029, it's time for a Super Bowl. Pratt's a 92. Amir Anthony's a 97. We picked up Rishi Rice, the 99 overall superstar X Factor. We added Quentin Nelson. Steve Avila, 84 star. We should definitely trade him, get some value out of it. Rosenberg, who we drafted, is an 84 over here, and beat as 81. Philip McCauley, an 83 now. And then Christian Watson's wide receiver, too. Pretty much fully revamped the wide receivers. On defense, we did get Buckner. He signed with us. Montez Sweat did as well. And we still have Kalijah Kansi. Jamarcus Broyles is now CB1. Humphrey CB2, Kirby Joseph, and Damar Irving with Redding and Daniels still just chilling in here. And Hassan Redick is still kicking. Let's go, Hassan. <laughs> it is our season. That's the best season we've had yet. 15 and 2. Let's see how the team did. Amir Anthony just can't get into first place in the NFL. But damn, he's doing really, really good. If we look across the entire NFL, Amir Anthony is fourth and his rival, Mike Allman, is first. Fuck you, Mike Allman. Antoine Gardner, who left for free agency, ends up having an amazing season with the Patriots. Patriots going off. Rishi Rice dominates the league in receiving yards. And it ain't even close. Rishi Rice with almost 2,000, 112.9 per game and 19 touchdowns. Jesus. Defensively, Kenneth Murray is sixth in the league in tackles. Not bad. And Pratt rushes for another 1,000-yard season. Quincy Stanley, the backup 16. Whatever it is about Rams' playbook, with the backup running back is sharking touchdowns. It's honestly not good for Pratt's progression, but that's okay. He's still doing well. Hassan Reddick is so good. Dude, I love Hassan Reddick. He just keeps getting older. He keeps getting crazy sacks. Kalijah can't see a 10-sack season. Nine for Matthias Buckner. It's, it's Super Bowl. I mean, it's not Super Bowl or bust. Like, this team would continue to progress, but it's 2029. It's been six years. Time for the divisional. I'm hoping this is just a blowout. We get the Washington Commanders who are eight and nine. The eight and nine Commanders got through the wild card. All right. The league is changing, man. All the superstars in the league are players that weren't even here when we started this. Other than Rishi Rice, Rishi Rice has just turned into an absolute demon. It's 10 to seven. Commanders look like they're going to score again, though. 14 to 10. Don't tell me the eight and nine Commanders are going to take out the 15 and two Rams, right? 17 to 14, 24 to 14, 21 to 24. Wait just a minute. You boys got to score here. 27 to 21. Commanders score. Wait a minute. Do we make the field goal? We do. 30 to 28. Commanders have the ball. They have one timeout left. We just got to watch the boys ball out. See, this is where it'd be so nice to have some abilities on these edge rushers. Laser tackled inbounds. He's in no huddle. They don't use their timeout there. Gotta get a stop. They throw underneath. Missed the tackle. He's down at the 50. Heater! 
Montez Sweat, the free agent signing. I don't think they're for they're not forced to take a timeout yet. They got to get in field goal range right here with this pass. Holy shit, Montez Sweat. That was huge. Pass rush got to get home. It does. Wobbler out of bounds. Oh, we're barely hanging on to this lead. It's third and 17. This might be the last play of the game. Hucks one deep. It's not the last. Dude, if he had caught that and toe dragged it though. Just get home. He lost on the same throw. They don't even get a Hail Mary off. Rams hang on. We hang on by two in the divisional. On to the NFC Championship. Will we see the Minnesota Vikings again? It's the 94 overall, nine and eight. Dallas Cowboys definitely could be a tough game here. Who's going to score first? It looks like it might be us. We do. We get a field goal up. We stop the Cowboys again. Oh, seven to 10. Cowboys score right back. Looks like we might score here. 17 to seven. Ooh, they score. Rams score. Damn. I didn't even have to watch it. 24 to 14. The Rams. Finally, we broke the NFC Championship curse. Two straight years, we lose it. Finally win it. The Super Bowl is against the 9 and 8 Houston Texans. I faced an 8 and 9, a 9 and 8. Now another 9 and 8 team. Let's check out the yearly awards. Mahomes got MVP. Amir Anthony just behind. Fuck Mahomes. Why is Mahomes always winning shit? Coach of the year is Sean McVay. The NFC Offensive Player of the Year is Rishi Rice. Defensive Player of the Year, Aiden Hutchinson, but Hassan Reddick got fifth. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Quincy Stanley, our backup running back. It all comes down to this, gentlemen. Our Super Bowl Rams lineup is as follows. We got Toon out of free agency, now a 92 overall. Quentin Nelson. We got Steve Avila, who we have to trade after this year. We got Biedas, Jefferson, and Rosenberg, both from the draft, and Philip McCauley from the draft. Free agent Christian Watson and a big, expensive trade for Rishi Rice. Hey, if we win this Super Bowl, we are leaving the Rams in good hands. On defense, we got so many superstar upgrades, finally! Jamarcus Broyles is a 93 with superstar. Matthias Buckner, 91 with superstar. And Damar Irving, he's got another upgrade, and he is superstar as well. We leave everybody in good hands. Hassan may retire this year so a free agent linebacker isn't bad but if i win the super bowl that shit ain't my problem but at least like if we win the super bowl we're not leaving the team all depleted we're we got a great team this is a dynasty the 91 overall rams taking on the 93 overall houston texans in the Super Bowl, come on! We need it, we need it. Opening drive, Texans are, oh, we scored! We score on the opening drive. The Texans only get a field goal. Our next drive, we score again! Texans got a safety, oh shit! It's 17 to five, this Super Bowl is so weird. The Rams are dicking on them! This Super Bowl's a blowout! 24 to 12, it's about all she wrote. We're running this puppy out, that might be Quincy Stanley in. Timeout from the Texans, we may have to punt this back if we don't convert here on the back of Amir Anthony. Oh, laser! That was the Christian Watson! Victory formation, it's Super Bowl of 2029! Oh my god, it's the Rams! Super Bowl! 24 to 12 against the Texans. Oh my God, that was so difficult, so stressful. I think I made some big mistakes though. I made some rookie mistakes, but we were able to correct them. Oh my God, Rishi Rice is nasty. Holy shit, almost had the 2,000 yard season. And there's our boy, Amir Anthony. You earned it, Amir. You earned that Super Bowl trophy. Don't ever let anybody take that from you. Taking out CJ Stroud on the Super Bowl, 24 for 27, elite accuracy from Amir Anthony. Should have been MVP, but whatever. Rishi Rice was 7 for 87 and two touchdowns in the Super Bowl. He low-key could win Super Bowl MVP if it's not Amir Anthony. The boys just played great. 24 to 12. That's all she wrote. And we've simmed up to the 2030 season. I just want to see what hands we're leaving this team in. I didn't draft myself. I didn't re-sign free agents. I just want to see what it'd be like if we just simmed the rest of it. So, Rishi Rice is actually starting to regress because he is a little bit older. Honestly, it's kind of just like... It's kind of just like Cooper Cup when we took this team over. The only difference is now there's a 94 overall star running back. There's a 99 superstar QB. Quentin Nelson and Toon. And honestly, Quentin Nelson's getting a little older. Maybe Avila stays and we trade Quentin Nelson. All we did was take Quentin Nelson for the Super Bowl run. By the way, I want to know your guys' opinion on this. Is this cheating in a franchise to move a guard to tackle? I feel like that doesn't 
honestly translate very well in the actual league so maybe i shouldn't be allowed to do that but in this context he's an 85 overall star so my o-line is still spectacular and then defensively matthias buckner 88 overall montez sweats really regressing brewers a guy we drafted looks like he's a 76 d tackle seems like a good pickup we also got downing a safety total whiff there at 66 kirby joseph still solid demar irving will be a stud for a long time broyles one of the best corners in the league now uh and it looks like marlon humphrey finally retires we're leaving this team in a bad linebacker position a lot of these guys are getting older and losing their development traits but our d-line and our dbs are really really solid so shit man i think we did a great job on this rebuild i i learned so much from this rebuild because i had made so many mistakes but I'll take those into my fourth ever rebuild. But hey, every Friday, expect a rebuild from me. Should be a blast. Hey, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching as always. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.